Good afternoon, everyone. <coughs> this is Tan Yazhong, a professor from Qian Jiatong University, which is located in Xi'an, China. My topic today is describing the vertexy with the elliptical, like ranging coherent structure and the roots to nonlinear vertex lift. Okay, let's get started. My presentation can uh, include the four parts. First, I will explain why we are interested in these problems. And the second one is the topological structures in fluid dynamics. In this part, I will introduce two important methods. And the second one is our focus. And then I will introduce some examples to show what can we do in using like ranging coherent structures. And the last part, we will give the <clears throat> conclusions. The first is the motivation. Actually, there are a rich variety of nonlinear phenomena, such as flow separation, stall, shock wave, surge, acoustics. They all accompanied with the complex flow structures. And they play important roles in aerodynamics performance of airfoil and the blades in turbo machinery. So the problems here, <clears throat> the nonlinear vertex, they are intrinsic and adapt the re uh, responsive to response to changing the situation around. But what is the relationship between the hair lift and the vertex structures? Maybe we can borrow some ideas from other disciplines. The scientists from the material science believe that the properties of the materials strongly depend on the topological structures and some extraordinary behaviors or extreme phenomena could be introduced by adjusting or controlling topological structures. As a guess, such theory or thinking can be introduced to flow control. <laughs> but the problem are arising. The first one is that what is the topological structure in fluid mechanics and how to define it. The second one is that does there exist inherent modes or genes in the flow structures? <clears throat> if the statement is true, we can believe that we understand the flow, the structures in flow dynamics, we understand the flow, even the more complicated complicated phenomena such like turbulence. Before we get to our study, we will see some examples around us. The first one is the very famous, which is the red spot in Jupiter's atmosphere. It is believed that it, it, it exists more than 300 years. We can observe the, a very big spot in the atmosphere. And we can also observe the similar patterns in the atmosphere. They all accompanied with the complex patterns. <clears throat> Another example is the flow, uh, is, the is the ocean flow. Uh, when the two rivers meet together with different sentiment, uh, uh, with different sentiment, uh, so they exhibit they exhibit different colors. We can see the separate tricks of the two rivers and the vertexes in the uh, in the subjects, they will go downstream, but the vert, but the structure will get get com more and more complicated, and to enhance the material mixing between the two kinds of the fluids. And another example is a disaster which is called the Maxic Gulf oil spill. Uh, we all know that the two years earlier. A, a boat spilled the, the oil on the surface of the ocean in Mexi, Mexico Gulf. Uh, we can observe that, that the oil will go along from a very long tunnel and spread out it, and to uh, exhibit, exhibit a kind of the structure. If we want to help the governor to clean the ocean, we have to know that what kind of the structures it is, and how to describe the, this structure on the ocean flow. 
the first method that we can <clears throat> uh, we can propose is that the initial manifold in fluid dynamics actually in uh, for some infinite definition uh, dimensional dissipative dynamic system the asymptotic behavior will involve or be attracted by uh, to a compact set known as a global attractor which is a invariant set actually here uh, the global attractor is considered as a eccentric uh, structure in the flow field the dynamics of, uh, can be described by deterministic flow on a lower di dimensional attractor so the initial manifold can be used to approach the global attractor and to describe the flow field we we want to study here we give the uh, one example <coughs> And then we pub, uh, publish these results in some papers, uh, which is if we want to use the uh, traditional manner, uh, method to describe the air soil, uh, to, de uh, to describe the flow field around the air soil, uh, in some cases we can see nothing. Uh, we can see the nothing, uh, no vertex. We can see no vertexes in, uh, in the flow field. But we, but if we use the initial manifold, we can detect uh, such kind of uh, vertexes <coughs> uh, around the airfoil. So the initial manifold is more convenient uh, to describe the uh, structures in the flow field. And the most important is that we also introduce the like ranging coherent structures. Uh, in this prime point, uh, because there is a very big problem in front of us, uh, earlier in the description failed to reveal the dynamic features such as energy or mass transport and the spatial, spatial or temporal coupling of the flow, uh, or ex especially for the complex transcendent phenomenon. <clears throat> Actually, Earlier in description is a kinetic description and it is no objectivity. Why? I will give you a, I will give you a, an example. You can see the figures below this current point. The focus can be transformed to a saddle if we if we describe the flow field using earlier in describe earlier in description. So the structures detected by earlier descriptions <clears throat> depends on the coordinate we, we, we are using. But if we wanted to describe the structures, it, it should be invariant and, and free to the framework of, uh, we are using. So the earlier description So the earlier, de earlier description is failed to describe the, the describe the structures and the detect uh, the structure direct uh, uh, correctly. We abandoned this description and referred to Lagrangian coherent structures. <clears throat> in the Lagrangian description, but how to achieve uh, this method to describe the structures in, in flow field uh, actually we use a finite time Lyapunov exponent <clears throat> uh, the final task of our study is to detect the attracting lcs and the repelling lcs for example if we put a two uh, di we've put a two different uh, particles around the lcs the distance of the two particles will grow exponentially. Actual, uh, here, the exponent is our, uh, is our finite time, Lyapunov exponent. We can use this uh, index to, uh, to detect the repelling LCS. Here, LCS is a boundary or separatrix between a stable and unstable manifold of the singular point. In our study, it can be regarded as a separate tricks of the different regions, which is also the boundary of the vertexes. <clears throat> but
but how to achieve this? Here we give the uh, <coughs> the formulas of the calculating the, the finite time Lyapunov exponent. The first step is to obtain the deformation of a gradient, and then based on which we get a Cursey green strain tensor. Actually, the range the range of the SN potential contour of the finite time Lyapunov exponent is the LCS. If we find LCS, we can see that we find the, the structures of the fluid field. Actually, there are two kinds of LCS, which is a hyperbola hyperbolic and the elliptic LCS. <clears throat> in, our, in the following study, we use the elliptic LCS to define and to detect vertexes. Because mathematically, there is no rigorous definition of the vertex. Uh, coherent, uh, coherent vertex still have no universal definitions in fluid me me mechanics. But the two main features of the poss possible definition have been emerging. The first one, it is broadly agreed that a vertex has been, have been, uh, have constituted regions with high vorticity. And vertices are generally revealed as involving the dominance with a high degree of the material invariance. Here is a here is a problem. If we said that if we consider that the vertex is a, a region with a high uh, concentrated with high vorticity, but how concentrated it should be, it cannot be determined by mankind or artificially. So we need to give more rigorous definitions of the vertex of the vertexes. <clears throat> Actually, we use LCS, the uh, especially uh, specifically the L uh, elliptic LCS. Indeed, the Lagrangian nature of the vertex can simply be measured, assured by defining its boundary as a tubular material surface. Unlike vorticity, material defined vertex boundary surface are inherent frame invariant, defined by a set of fluid trajectory rather than by coordinate or instantaneous scalar flow field. <clears throat> the most important thing that elliptic LCS are close and nested material surface that act as a building blocks of the Lagrangian equivalent of vertices, rotating domain regions of the trajectories that generally tra traverse the phase space without substantial stretching or fold. The mimic behaviors of the KAM Tori that form the elliptic region is Hamiltonian systems. Actually, there is another way of defining the detect vertexes, which is called the polar rotation angle which is also a mathematical process assign, assessment of material rotation. And it's also a new diagonals of elliptic island for two or three dimensional flows. Uh, the PRA is the angle of the rigid body rotation component obtained from the classic polar de de decomposition of the flow gradient to a rota rotational and a stretching factor. Here we give the steps of the opting the PRA to detect uh, to detect the vertexes in the flow field. We will neglect the details, but because of the time the mission. But I can tell you that the basic idea is to divide the motion of the particles into rotation and stretching. <clears throat> There's another, another thing I have to emphasize is, is that in three dimension uh, flows, the polar elliptic LCS are, tori are torridal or, sil or cylindrical levels of the surface of PRA, but it is also not ob objective and hence will generally change in rotating, uh, rot rotating frame. In order to solve this problem, we also developed another method called like arranging average uh, vorticity deviation. <clears throat> and the last, I will give you some examples. Here we, uh, 
<coughs> we simulate the flow field around the airfoil, and we use the repelling LCS, which denote, uh, denoted by the blue lines, and to denote the the, re the different regions. And the red lines are attracting LCS, which can give the formation process of the vertexes. <coughs> And, as, and here in this example, we will, uh, we, will, we will give the more clear relationship between the uh, repelling LCS and the, and the uh, uh, attracting LCS. Attracting LCS is uh, <clears throat> run it by repelling LCS, but they play a different role of describing flow fields. And then we also use the this method to the detect <clears throat> to the control uh, flow control technology, which is synthetic jet. We use the synthetic jet to control the flow and to enhance uh, the lift of the airfoil. But what happened in the but why is that? And what happened in the flow field? We use the LCS to dis to describe this topological change in the two, in these two different cases, and to explain the uh, to explain the reason of the of the uh, the lift of the airfoil. <clears throat> okay, let's give the conclusions. Elliptical like ranging coherent structure structure can be used as a topological structure of the vertex. Like ranging coherent structure are the intrinsic structures or the hidden skeleton of the flow field. If we understand this structure, we will understand the flow. Because there are a lot of properties in the like ranging coherent structures, such as the energy location, targeted wave energy, imperfection immunity, and dissipative structures. LCS can not only be used in detecting the vertex, or describing the the flow the flow field, it can also be used in uh, can, uh, the flow control technology. The aerodynamics performance can be improved feasibly, and uh, controlling or modeling or uh, modifying elliptical LCS or fundamental modes. Thanks for your attention. Is there any questions or comments?